I was so thrilled when you were you, you told me you're doing insect songs. I'm really proud of these pieces. I think they they are very evocative, and I sing them through in my head, and I can and it's still I still have the same feelings now that I did back then. Sex songs 20 years ago now, in 1998, and uh, returning to it after all this time, I I was pleasantly surprised because it still felt to me um, that it was coming from a good place. commissioned by Jeannie Marsh and, and Ken Murray to write these two insect songs and it, I didn't really know they were going to be about, about insects but it's just that there was these two poems which both of which appealed to me in terms of their internal rhythms and they were related by being about insects and so in the case of these two poems one by Jamie Grant and one by Peter Skrzynski I, I looked through reams and reams of poetry books to try and find the right sort of poems. I was aware, for example, of the work of Ross Edwards where he'd use insect motifs in his music. I sort of was interested in doing that, but it was more like uh, both of these poems have something to do with the human experience. In, in the case of Jamie Grant's poems, it's about you considering what happens afterwards and being taken over by ants, which are everywhere. And in the case of Peter's poem, it's, it's about it's about this as the majestic chorus, if you like, the sound which surrounds us. And uh, so again, they were, they were quite uh, evocative poems in, in terms of musical content. And over, the, over the time period, I have made a few revisions, for example, to make the rhythmic, rhythmic grouping just a slightly less uh, like you don't have to be such a contortionist to be able to perform it. So I've tried to make it easier for the performers and better. Uh, yeah, Jenny and Vlad play this. I mean, firstly, I was uh, astonished by, pleasantly astonished, but not surprised by the calibre of the performance. But it, it, yeah, it still evoked all those emotions that it evoked way back, um, way back when I wrote it. I really conceived of it as a duo between two equal voices, and they're each bringing something to the text. They're, without without one of them, it doesn't work. You need both of them and they both work together and they work in partnership, in true partnership, I would hope, to create an emotional response, to create a sense of place and a, a, a pictorial image, if you like, through music um, that goes beyond just the poem in the first place. important for me in particular to be in recording sessions because what we're doing in the recording session is we're putting something down for posterity and whether we like it or not this is going to be what people refer to this is more than ever more than at any time in history this is going to be representative of this piece I do like getting involved in performers and particularly if I'm working with good quality performers and the whole process of how much, how picky can I be? Where's, where do the, the returns start to diminish? When do I have to back off? When can I push further? How far am I going to get? Uh, I, I, I do enjoy that. Uh, I don't enjoy editing at all, but I love it when it comes out in the end and it's a product of which uh, I and the performers can be really proud because that is how we're going to reach people. When people hear insect songs for the first time, um, I want them to listen to the text and I want them to listen to how the guitar interacts with the voice and what's, what's the role of the guitar? And it's about insects, right? So 
how is what the guitar doing and how is what the voice doing relating to these either the ants in the shower recess or cicadas at night. Can send.